Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Santa Barbara Consortium Virtual College Fair. We've got an exciting session today. A couple housekeeping items before we begin. First off, note that your camera and microphone are off, so our panelists can't see or hear you. If you have questions, please do so using the Q&A button to type your question to the presenter at any time. Also note that we have additional sessions available on the StriveScan website. So if you have interest in another institution, go ahead and check the schedule and get signed up. Also note that we're recording the sessions and those will be posted to our website at strivescan.com slash CalSOAP. With those behind us, we'll turn it over to our first presenter from Syracuse University. Okay. So I'm looking for my sharing privileges here. Um, here we go. Hi, my name is Janet Reccia, and I'm with the Office of Admissions for Syracuse University. And thank you all for coming today. Um, I want you to understand what it means to be orange because that's Syracuse University school color. It's a color not only of passion, but of lifestyle. And with more than 15,000 students at Syracuse, we're bold, we're passionate, and definitely committed in the classroom and in the community. But here's where you can actually customize who you wanna be and gain real world experience from industry leaders. So since you're not able to visit right now, I wanted to give you this, a sense of place. With, we are a private, mid-sized interdisciplinary university located in the heart of New York State in the Finger Lakes District, atop of a hill overlooking the city of Syracuse. Syracuse is a mid-sized city that provides many opportunities for our students that include internships and job opportunities and lots of great things for our students to do. You can go outdoors, they go hiking to nearby parks or the Adirondacks, or even visit an apple orchard. Beacon Stiff is a pretty famous apple orchard, according to USA Today, or our local ski slopes. Um, we are four and a half hours away from a lot of major cities, so our students do frequent those cities. We are centrally located not only within the state, but to all these cities around us. So we can round out your learning and customize who you want to be here because we offer 200 academic programs with 100 minors across 10 schools and colleges. Courses and all other disciplines are all available here. You could be an architecture, architecture student and want to open up your own real estate firm so you can get a minor in real estate, a fashion designer who wants to open up their own store and get a minor in entrepreneurship on top of that a communications minor. Um, there are so many things that you can mix and match and layer and be who you wanna be. We are very, very well known for our School of Communications. Newhouse is one of the top three in the United States. And um, we all have really wonderful majors in all of the other colleges, even Maxwell, which is where we have our political science program, as well as our College of Law. We have pre-med, pre-dental, pre-vet, and uh, pre-law, and we are a tier one research university with numerous 25 rankings in a variety of disciplines. So we do participate in cutting edge research. We are a tier one uh, university. We're on the uh, top doctoral universities across the United States and undergraduate students as early as their freshman year are getting involved in research arts and um, research and their source grants of up to 2,800 in the summer and 5,000 during the year for research that include everything that you need for your research. We also have five centers abroad. We've been in this business for over a hundred years. We own and operate centers in Florence, Madrid, London, Strasbourg, France, and Santiago, Chile, plus partners in 60 other countries. We have semester and short terms there. We also have discovery programs that you could travel abroad your first year. Um, class sizes at the, at the university are all small. They're about 15 to one. Um, we also have three centers domestically across the United States. I myself work in the Los Angeles Center. We have Washington DC and New York City where you could also do semester programs with internships. Um, being orange is what we're all about. We're 50 states and 170 countries here. We have a diversity, a global population, 300 plus student organizations. The Barnes Center at the Arch is one of the new coolest places that you could feed your mental health and also your physical health there. Take care of yourself all the way around. All kinds of health services 
and lots of great dining options at the, uh, uh, the Shine Student Center. And it, there's an intercultural collective that brings together all our groups across campus. Um, you really get energized at this university. It will definitely keep you supported. So here's how you join the Orange family. We have two decisions. November 15th is our early decision. Regular decision is January uh, 1st. And if you consider applying early decision, you will get first uh, consideration for everything. It's the highest demonstrated interest. We are holistic in our selection process. You will select the college of your choice. We are test optional going forward for 2022 and personal interviews are given to seniors. They're not required, but highly recommended. And merit scholarships show up in your acceptance letter. They start at 10,000, they go all the way up to full tuition scholarships. And financial aid, one, one and a half billion dollars went out um, in, in, from our alumni that goes into financial aid for our students and scholarships. So um, hopefully um, we're here to help you. You could reach out to me anytime. Um, here is my email and I'm going to hand it off to my next colleague. Thank you. We're on to St. Mary's College. Very good. Good evening, everyone. Just a quick second here to push all the, uh, the right buttons. My name is Alex I'm with St. Mary's College. Um, I've been at St. Mary's College for eight years now. Um, I have had the pleasure of having all of California as part of my territory um, for all eight of those years. So really excited. Um, was able to come out and visit you folks um, this past year or this fall, um, just earlier this month, uh, or I guess last month in October, um, was out there in California and really enjoy my time out there. Um, but this is my hometown. So I always love talking about uh, my hometown and uh, this wonderful place we call St. Mary's College. St. Mary's College, we're located in beautiful Notre Dame, Indiana. We're about 90 minutes outside Chicago. As far as uh, where are we located, gives you some Midwest geography, again, about 90 minutes outside Chicago. Our larger town that we're in is the city of South Bend, Indiana, a little over 100,000 people, so a decent sized town. Uh, but what's really nice about St. Mary's is we're a really small campus environment, about 15, 1600 students here at St. Mary's. Um, so really small class sizes. Um, that's why students choose St. Mary's. Um, average uh, class size is gonna be about 15, 16 students starting freshman year for you. Um, gonna be about nine to one faculty to student ratio um, at St. Mary's, so really small class sizes. But I enjoy that while we are that small campus community, uh, we are also a Catholic college at St. Mary's. Um, and we're also a women's college at St. Mary's as well. So kind of some unique characteristics there. One of the things I think is really exciting for students coming from California um, is that you certainly will not be the only one. Um, while we are located in the heart of the Midwest, um, students come to St. Mary's from all over the place. California is actually our fifth largest state as far as enrollment. So students are coming from California, students are coming from Florida, students are coming from Boston, students are coming from Nebraska uh, and everywhere in between. So I think that's really, really exciting. Definitely a nationwide and worldwide college environment. Uh, individualized is really the word I like to talk about when talking about our academics at St. Mary's because um, we don't review based on major. Um, we only offer acceptances to all of St. Mary's. Um, and then once you're there, you have until the end of your sophomore year before you need to declare a major. So lots of time, lots of flexibility. Uh, to find the program that you are excited about and make sure that it is the right home for you professionally and academically. Some of those heavy hitters for us, what are students asking about what is uh, you know, popular on campus? It's all good, that's why we have it. Nursing is probably our most asked about program at St. Mary's, a nationally accredited nursing program. Education is fantastic and that nationally accredited education program. Biology is really strong at St. Mary's. Uh, communications is really strong. Psychology is really strong. Business are really strong programs at St. Mary's. And again, because we are that small school environment, very much individualized. And again, everything is very much student focused and student driven at St. Mary's. So we have some great research opportunities. And one of the things I think is great for our students is they are your research opportunities. This isn't a faculty member uh, on helping with their project. It is a faculty member helping you uh, with your project. And that really that idea of this is you leading your experience um, is really uh, all throughout the St. Mary's experience. We are a women's college and proud to be so. Um, it's certainly a unique environment. The majority of our students, if you are out there and say, I go to a co-ed high school, I have guys and girls at my high school, um, you are the norm. The majority of our students do come from co-ed high schools. 
Um, if we are maybe the only women's college you're considering, or maybe to even know there were women's colleges, we're the first one you've heard of. Uh, the majority of our students uh, were the only women's college that they applied to. So we always think that's a really exciting population to have on campus. Um, I enjoyed it. It's definitely a unique environment. Uh, my wife is a St. Mary's grad. Um, it's a really wonderful environment where truly every leadership role on campus is held by a woman. Um, the highest GPA, the lowest GPA, the most quiet, quietest person, the most talkative person are all women on campus. So as you're learning, learning and growing personally and professionally and spiritually, uh, you are doing that with other strong women on campus, which is so exciting. Students often say, don't I have to go to you know, the big university in the co-ed environment to get a job? Absolutely not. Um, we are a nationwide and worldwide alumni base. Um, LA is actually home to one of our largest alumni bases. We have a huge alumni base in DC, um, Atlanta, uh, throughout the entire Midwest, Chicago, Indianapolis, of course, really strong alumni group. So I promise there is a bell who has gone before you in any given field or in any given graduate area, um, any different part of the country, uh, whether it be Minneapolis or uh, back home to Southern California, um, there is going to be a bell who is in front of you. I mentioned that we're a small school and a women's college, and we're located in Notre Dame, Indiana. We're located in Notre Dame, Indiana, uh, because there's these other two campuses uh, that are around us. The University of Notre Dame um, is immediately across the street from us, and Holy Cross College is immediately to our south. I proudly say we are separate and unique institutions. Um, if you don't like football or hockey or marching band, that's okay. You don't need to. Um, but what I love is that truly, if you want season football tickets, um, if you want to go watch hockey, if you want to join the marching band, uh, they're going to play Navy this weekend. And if you want to be in the student section next year, awesome. You truly have every opportunity um, over at the University of Notre Dame um, and Holy Cross College as well, both academically uh, and uh, per, um, personally uh, as well. Every club or organization is open for students across the street. We realize as a, a private institution that there are cheaper options out there, um, but we work really, really hard to make sure that St. Mary's can be affordable uh, for all students. Um, we have some really wonderful scholarships. Our academic scholarships start at $20,000, go all the way up to $34,000. We have a four-year promise that's really important. You will graduate in four years. You can study abroad. Uh, you can be a nursing major. You can be a varsity athlete in our D3 sports. You will graduate in four years. None of our programs are impacted. None of our programs have a wait list. Uh, we have space for you to study what you want to study at St. Mary's and that really helps keeps the costs down. We're test optional have been for a number of years. Uh, we are also a free application as well. Um, I will be the first person to read that application uh, coming from California. So I would love to read that common app, that free common app coming in. Uh, my information is on the screen now and I will put it in the chat. Thank you so much for your time this evening and uh, hope to see you on campus. We are open for visitors. Go ahead and make the trip out. We'd love to have you. Thank you. Alex, thank you so much. Great job. We're on to our next institution, the University of California, Santa Cruz. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, so you should all be seeing my um, slide now. Um, my name is Diana Elizabeth Torres. I'm the UC Santa Cruz admissions representative currently serving your area in Santa Barbara, as well as Ventura area. Thank you all for joining us. Um, so in the next minutes, I'm gonna talk to you about UC Santa Cruz. Um, UCSC is one of the nine institutions within the University of California system. We're located up in Northern California from Santa Barbara up to um, UCSC. It's about four driving hours. And um, we are a coastal university. We're two miles off the coast and we're sitting within 2,000 acres worth of redwood forest, meadows, and we have beautiful views of all of Santa Cruz, the ocean, and on clear skies, you can see all the way through Monterey Bay as well. Um, within our campus, you can see that all of the buildings, residential and academic, are intertwined within the redwood tree. So we are in a very unique um, environment. You'll see deer roaming freely, a lot of walking in hills, but we do also have public transportation as well if you're not much of a walker. So if you're looking for a campus um, that's within a very clean, naturey um, environment, we are definitely for you. Now, while we are large in size, we are actually the second smallest you see when it comes to student enrollment. So what that means for you is that all of the opportunities as far as like research, internship, um, jobs on campus are for you to take advantage of and to take on. In terms of our academic programs, we have 69 majors and 40 minors that fall under five academic divisions. Within this slide, you can see that some of the popular majors include computer science, business management economics, film and digital media, and human biology. 
that is our pre-med um, program. If you're interested in the medical field, most students um, do human biology on our campus. Um, if you're not sure of what you wanna study, you can actually go and undeclare for UCSC. We do not consider your major as part of our admissions process, but if you have an idea of what that major might be, I definitely do recommend that you propose it within the application. Um, and you will have until the end of your second year to declare a major. Now that is true for all majors except for one, which you can imagine is computer science. Computer science has been like our top most popular major. Um, so because of that, it has become selective. By selective, it simply means that if you know that that's what you wanna go into, please do propose it within the application since you do have to be admitted directly into it. If you're not admitted directly into computer science, then we can consider you for admissions through your alternate major. So if you're a student that's interested in CS, please make sure that you list a primary as well as, well as an alternate major. Within all of our academic programs, um, research is being conducted. Um, really across all of the UCs, right? I'm sure you've heard this. Um, and at UC Santa Cruz, 75% of our undergraduates do participate in research. Some start as early as their first year. So I do invite you all to keep an open mind and consider um, doing some research on our campus. Um, within our campus, we have many ways that you can get involved. Your involvement does not end after high school. You continue that on our campus. We have over 200 plus clubs and organizations, everything from like ethnic, career, religious, and lifestyle options. And because of our location, there's a lot of like outdoor activities from like hiking, biking, huge uh, surfing community within Santa Cruz itself. And many students like to join competitions throughout the year as well. We do also have our ethnic and identity resource centers. They do a lot of cultural events um, for all of our students um, to, get to, to get together. And through all of these organizations and spaces, that is where you find your home away from home. Um, now, our beautiful environment isn't our only advantage. We're also the closest you see to Silicon Valley. Silicon Valley is this innovative industry where many of the tech companies are located. So like Google, Amazon, um, Netflix, just to name a few. And many students from all academic fields and backgrounds get internships there during their time on our campus as well as jobs after they graduate. Um, last but not least, within the UC system and UCSC, there are various scholarship opportunities. When you submit your UC application, you'll be considered for scholarships such as like the Blue and Gold Opportunity Plan, the Campus Merit Scholarship, um, the Undergraduate Dean Award is for out-of-state and international students. And the next um, information that I want to share with you all would be housing. Um, housing at UC Santa Cruz looks a little bit different. We have the 10 residential colleges. Two of the UCs follow this model. Um, UC, for UC San Diego, you'll choose a residential college as part of the UC app. But for UC Santa Cruz, you'll choose a residential college at a later time. These um, 10 residential colleges are the communities that you live at. You can see that architecturally, each is different. And they're located in different areas across our campus and they differ by their theme. So for example, the theme of Kresge College is power and representation. We have College 9 as international and global perspective. Regardless of your major, you get to pick where you wanna live. So you'll be living with students across all majors from different backgrounds, from different areas around the world. So it does create like a very diverse living and learning experience. Within every residential college, we have the dorms, the apartment buildings, academic buildings where you have your academic advisors, your counselors on our campus. And for every two residential college, there's one dining hall. Um, so five dining halls that you can eat from in addition to 13 cafes and restaurants that we have spread out throughout the larger university. So really within your own little neighborhood, you have everything, but you also never feel secluded. And um, these residential colleges were created so the students really had um, the feeling of a small liberal arts college while everyone is part of like the greater UCSC banana slug family since we are known as the banana slugs that you see um, is seen. And with that, if you wanna continue um, learning more about UC Santa Cruz, I do encourage you to follow us on our social media platforms. We're having a lot of events um, as well as like virtual um, tours. Um, this week we have our open house event. So if you scan this QR code, um, you'll be taken to a quick form that you have to fill out. Um, and then if you ever have any questions, please feel welcome to reach out and I'll make sure to post my contact information in the chat. Thank you, everyone. Diana, thanks so much. We're on to our next institution, the representative from Laguna College of Art and Design. Hello, thank you everyone for joining us today. My name is Ray Vargas. I'm gonna be talking about Laguna College of Art and Design. Uh, let me share my screen real quick so I can get my presentation started. And um, 
one of the things that uh, we really like students to do is take advantage of our portfolio review, review process. So uh, before I start my presentation, I wanna drop a link in the chat. And this is for you to fill out if you wanna follow up with me based on this presentation and you'd like some feedback on your portfolio, definitely recommend uh, taking advantage of that um, service that we offer because your portfolio, if you're interested in art school, is going to be the most important component of your application. So at LCAD, um, when I describe our school, I describe us as a private nonprofit, fully accredited four-year BFA. And in my opinion, th these are very important qualifications to understand if you're a hopeful art professional and looking at art schools. Um, the art school landscape is very different from your traditional colleges, your state colleges, your public colleges. And so uh, I think these are important criteria to keep in mind. If you don't know what these mean and you want a one-on-one -on -one, you know, sort of interview or consultation, I'm happy to provide that uh, for students. Um, I'm going to show a short video, but uh, I'll talk throughout it, and it's going to cover uh, our different majors. Uh, beyond being a private nonprofit, fully accredited four-year BFA, um, LCAD is known for a few other things. One, we're known for our small size. We're known for our focus on technical ability and our affordable tuition. Animation is one of our more popular majors. We are known for focusing on a Disney-style animation. It is hand-drawn. It is 24 frames per second. That means 24 drawings for one second of animation. It's a very meticulous approach to animation. We also offer experimental animation, which is more focused on digital media and uh, sets you up more for television style animation. Drawing and painting is our oldest major. It's the one that started our college. We're known for focusing on a realistic approach to drawing and painting. We do not get into abstract art or a postmodern approach to drawing and painting at LCAD. It is all based on classical figure drawing skills. Entertainment design is probably right now our most competitive major to get into. This refers to all the behind the scenes art that happens uh, in visual development, concept art, character design, storyboarding, that sort of thing. Overlaps a lot with game art, but in game art, you're being trained more specifically to the game art industry. That includes 3D and 2D concept art. Uh, and being in Orange County, we have great ties to the game art industry. Uh, graphic design and digital media is the only major at our school that's not based on drawing fundamentals. However, it is our most successful major in regards to um, employment rate. Uh, in our graphic design program, you're gonna be learning multiple digital media platforms. Uh, and last but not least, there's illustration. This is the major that I graduated from at LCAD. Illustration is our catch-all major. Uh, it is going to teach you the broadest skill set, and you'll learn a little bit of everything from all the majors that I've covered today. So those are our seven majors that we offer. It is all based in visual arts. And like I said, your portfolio is very, very important. We're a small school. We're about 750 students total. That means about 10 students per class or per instructor is our average. We're also known for being the least expensive private BFA program on the West Coast, which we're very proud of. Um, and so as far as applying to LCAD, we have a very straightforward admissions process. Our application is free on our website and there is no deadline to apply. If you'd like to know as soon as possible whether or not you got accepted, our early action date is December 1st. But again, there is no deadline to apply. And we do encourage some students to spend a little more time developing their portfolio because like I keep saying, it's the most important part of your application to LCAD. And this is the rest of our application process. We want your transcripts, which have to be official transcripts, um, a short essay and your portfolio. We do not require test scores. We do not require letters of recommendation. Uh, we do not consider extracurricular activities. It's really gonna come down to your portfolio and your GPA. Um, my favorite part of my job is to help students with their portfolio. Uh, we do expect a specific portfolio depending on your major. So if you're applying to animation, we want to see an animation centric portfolio. Um, and that goes for all of our majors. If you're not sure what goes into your specific majors portfolio, we offer uh, portfolio guidelines on our website, but really I'm your best source as your counselor to give you feedback on your portfolio and help you develop it, develop it until uh, you have a, your best chance of getting accepted and receiving a high scholarship. We do award scholarships to every student that's accepted to our school. It's called a merit scholarship. It's very important. 
Uh, typically, it accounts for about 26% of your overall tuition, which is a huge chunk. And like I said, we're already the least expensive private BFA on the entire West Coast. Uh, there are other scholarship opportunities available to students, as well as, of course, the FAFSA, which we highly encourage everyone to fill out. Uh, these are some of the places that our graduates are working at. I myself have worked at some of these places myself. I spent about 15 years as a freelance illustrator and designer and painter in, L in the LA area. After graduating from LCAD, I'm back at school getting my grad degree right now in painting. So I've got a lot of experience to share with students that are looking at uh, becoming professional artists. This is our contact info. And again, fill out the link um, if you'd like to keep in touch with me and, and get some feedback on your portfolio. Thank you. Great, thanks so much, appreciate it. We're on to our next mm -hmm. institution, Chapman University. Awesome, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and we'll get started. All right, well, hello and welcome. So just to quickly introduce myself, my name is Eddie Mejia. I'm a senior admission counselor at Chapman University. And so uh, just to let you know, I'm actually your representative as you go throughout the college application process. So uh, I'll just go ahead and jump in just to kind of give you some overview in terms of who we are, what we're all about. And so let's start with location. So for us, we are located in the city of Orange. So we're essentially right next to Anaheim in Orange County. And you can see just in general kind of our location, how far we are from Los Angeles, how we are, we are from the beaches. Angel Stadium is about 10 minutes away. Disneyland is 15 minutes away. So uh, not too bad for students to be able to kind of take some time when they want to be able to take a break from classes. But I think this is also the showcase in term for how we are, you know, pretty closely located to some of the most important economies in the United States, LA County, Orange County. So we see a lot of great opportunities when it comes for students to be able to get internships and jobs. And I think that's some of the things that I always mention to students is that Chapman is growing at a really fast rate. And so that's something really exciting for our students to be able to see. Um, but I think for us, you know, as we are getting these new opportunities, new facilities, uh, we still want to be able to keep touch in terms for kind of who we are at our core. And so that is a mid-sized university. And so you can see that our undergraduate population is about 7,500 students and average classroom size is about 24. And so we want to be able to make sure that our students have that high accessibility between themselves and their faculty members so that they can be able to connect with and learn from them. You can see that we have over 120 academic, uh, academic offerings. And so you can be able to kind of see, you know, if you want to do a major with a minor, double major, Chapman offers that flexibility. And I think for us as well, we want to be able to have our students come from a global perspective, whether that's on our campus, seeing that we have students from over 79 countries. And then as well, uh, we have a little bit of about half of our students go study abroad at least once during their college career. Now, this is just a little bit of a snapshot in terms of kind of what our students are able to experience on a daily basis at Chapman. So you can see uh, just a little bit of our down, our, our plaza area. And then as well, uh, once again, you can kind of see different parts. Angel Stadium is right there. Uh, you can see the, the fireworks from Disneyland. But then as well, you'll see how the university programming board wants to make sure that they're getting the most of their college experience through some of the events and programming that happens on campus and off campus. Now, as I mentioned, I think we want to be able to do our best to prepare students. And so you can be able to see some of the recent places that we've been finding our alumni at. But we always tell students, before you think of some of these places where you would love to work at, always think Chapman first. And that's because we want you to make sure that you establish your foundation, uh, your network of individuals that you can be able to connect with, whether that's alumni or your professors that are coming from these industries and are able to provide that experience, that insight to you. Now, once again, just to talk about some of the things that you can be able uh, to get engaged with and involved, uh, we have a little bit close to 200 clubs and organizations on campus. And so I always say, tell students, you know, it's a little bit of a spectrum. You have uh, the left end where, you know, maybe it's a little bit more fun clubs like the, the spike ball club, the Pokemon club, um, surfing club, or maybe that kind of on the right hand side where the career driven, maybe they're the pre-law club, the dental society, uh, the pre veterinarian club. Uh, and then as well, you have that middle ground. Maybe it's uh, civic engagement. Maybe it's uh, being involved in student government or Greek life through our fraternities and sororities that we have on campus. That's what really makes a Chapman student, being an individual that is engaged and involved and just wants to be able to get the most of their college experience. And 
Really quickly, I know I kind of mentioned in terms of kind of how Chapman is growing, and you really see that in the way that we're investing in our students. And so, uh, for example, we're just going to be completing a new dance center for our uh, College of Performing Arts students, and then as well our Keck Center. This is for our STEM-related fields. Uh, this is essentially the, the length of a football field, three stories worth of new technology, new equipment. And so even our engineering wing just got completed in August. And so I think this is, just, this is just to show you how Chapman is always going to be making sure that you have everything at your disposal for you to be successful. And that will make sure that as you head into these industries, you're well prepared and familiar. Now, just to kind of give you some last uh, idea and, and some last information, uh, this is just to kind of give you an idea in terms for um, you know, what our applicant pool looks like. So we have a 60% admission rate uh, in terms for students that were admitted to, to Chapman that was with a 3.8 GPA that's also weighted. And then as well, 74% of our student body apply test optional. And just to be able to give you some idea, we have two deadlines coming up. So the first one uh, just passed November 1st, but we still have our January 15th deadline. So you can be able to apply for some of our programs that we have. Now, lastly, just want to touch on some of the things that we focus on. We look at academics and context in terms for kind of depending on what you're looking to study, how you perform within your setting, and then as well, uh, we also look in terms for how you're able to impact your community, and then as well, if you can be able to have that same impact at the Chapman University. And so uh, this is just kind of some of the things that we'll be focusing in on during the application process. But uh, I think I just want to be able to kind of mention lastly in terms for how you know, we do fall similarly in line with other private universities, but we do our best to make sure that we support students through the various amounts of aid possible, whether that's merit based aid, uh, department aid, and then as well need based aid. But once again, uh, just want to make sure that you can be able to take a look at Chapman and see us as an accessible institution. So with that, I want to just want to be able to tell you, thank you so much for taking the time to hear about Chapman. I also put my information down below if you want to be able to get in contact. Thank you so much. Thank you. We're on to our final presenter from Chamberlain University. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. My name is Cynthia Capel with Chamberlain University. And tonight I'm going to be telling you a little bit about uh, the programs that Chamberlain offers. Uh, and here's my contact information with QR code. I'll also put my link in the chat for you if you'd like additional information. Uh, just some history on Chamberlain. Uh, we are the largest nursing school in the US. Uh, we've been around for over 130 years. Uh, our roots date back to the late 1800s. Uh, we were one of the first to offer a BSN program in the early 80s. We now offer an RN to BSN completion degree. Uh, in the early 2000s, we launched that and we've evolved and now we have MSN, a DNP and some other non-nursing programs in our uh, program offering. Uh, here's a map of all of our campus locations across the country. Uh, we now have 23 campuses. We just opened a Pasadena, California campus uh, recently. Uh, and then we have campuses all across the nation for those looking to get into nursing, our pre-licensure BSN programs. Uh, we have currently about 31,000 students studying with us for nursing, and we have about 76,000 alumni across the nation. Uh, here's a map of all of the different programs that we offer. Uh, we do have the campus-based BSN program, uh, and that's an accelerated uh, program to get to Bachelor's of Science in Nursing uh, in a three-year period, uh, which do not have wait lists currently. Uh, we also offer the online RN to BSN program. Once a student has completed their associate degree uh, in nursing uh, community college, they can bridge to the online RN to BSN program. We also have an online RN to BSN to MSN program, which uh, does offer seven different specialty tracks. And they are listed here. Uh, we have uh, specialties in family nurse practitioner, healthcare policy, nurse educator, nurse executive, nursing informatics, and population health. And we've also launched recently adult gerontology acute care and primary care nurse practitioner programs. We also have an accelerated RN to MSN program, uh, and we have postgraduate certificates in each of these areas as well for students to obtain a master's degree in nursing and are looking to go back for a postgraduate certificate. Um, and then we all go up to doctor of nurse practice in the nursing field, which is the highest level currently in nursing. And then we have two non-nursing programs. We have a master's of public health and a master's of social work. Uh, this just talks about our accreditation. We are regionally accredited through the Higher Learning Commission. 
Uh, that's the same uh, accreditation you'd see at the UCs and state schools here in California. And our programs are CCNA accredited, Commission on Collegiate Nursing Education. And those are some key components you wanna look for as you continue on uh, in your education. Also, our programs are traditional in that you do receive a letter grade and a GPA. Uh, they are not proficiency-based, and that's going to be critical as you go on and apply for graduate school. Uh, this talks about our Jumpstart Dual Enrollment Grants. Uh, we do partner uh, with Santa Barbara City College, so any of the associate degree in nursing students do qualify for this Dual Enrollment Jumpstart Grant. This grant is exclusively from Chamberlain and it offers two tuition-free upper division nursing courses that you can take in your associate degree program towards your BSN uh, through a grant that we offer. Uh, this grant offers, uh, or excuse me, covers the tuition and fees for the two courses. The only thing that the students are responsible for would be the books. Uh, these are completely online courses, so they won't interfere with the associate degree program there at the college. Uh, we do offer this six times per year. We offer it in January, March, May, July, September, and November. So we do have classes that can be taken during the breaks in the program there, which would typically be in winter, would be January, and in summer would be July classes. The two uh, free courses offered in the grant program are NR351, Transitions in Professional Nursing, and that's the first course in the uh, RNBSN program, and NR361, which is RN Information Systems and Healthcare, which is essentially the last course offered in the program. So it's a great grant opportunity for students to take uh, courses towards their BSN while going for their associate degree in nursing. Um, there is no obligation to continue with Chamberlain. It's uh, simply an opportunity to try out Chamberlain courses. And if you like them, wonderful. Uh, once you graduate and have at least your attempt to test date for the NCLEX, you can then continue on with our RN to BSN online program. Uh, we also do have an RN to MSN Jumpstart grant. Uh, this is available to students in their first semester of their ADN program or within six months of graduation. Uh, this is a completely graduate level program, takes you directly to Masters of Science in Nursing, and we offer one tuition free course with this grant. Again, the tuition and fees are covered through the Chamberlain grant. Uh, the only thing that students responsible is for the book. They are also offered six times per year, and this course is completely online. It's the NR513 Professional Role Enhancement, which is the first course in the R and MSN, actually R and MSN program. These are the upcoming start dates that we offer for the Jumpstart Grant and for our general admission. We have a rolling admission, so we do start every two months. Our next start date is in January, and courses run for two months in length. And then we have classes again in March, May, and consecutively after that every two months. Uh, the only requirements for the Jumpstart Dual Enrollment Grant is students must take their first free course before their degree is conferred or before they graduate, and they have up to one year to complete the second course. Or students can take them together. That's purely up to the student, and our admissions team can assist them in deciding when is best to take those uh, free courses. Here's just a map of the RNWSN program. It's a 10 to 12 month program, it's completely online, and it's designed for someone who is working and trying to continue their education and get to the bachelor's level as quickly as possible. It's seven nursing and seven liberal arts classes. And here's a little uh, breakdown of the, how we break down and award credits. These students do receive uh, what's called a CCAP, 77 proficiency credits for the associate degree that they are in there in nursing. And that would leave 45 credits remaining. Um, they can also get up to 15 additional transfer credits for any uh, liberal arts and science courses they've taken already. Um, and that would leave a minimum residency of 30 credits to complete uh, the program. And that can be done online in 10 to 12 months. Um, if they do decide to take the two free courses, then it would drop down to 24 credits to complete our, our BSM program. And that can be done easily in uh, eight to 10 months. While Cynthia, working. we're gonna transition over to the last segment as your time is, uh, has expired. So we thank everyone okay. today so far for the contributions they've made and the time we have left, we're going to pose a question to the group and we'll ask each of our presenters to weigh in and offer their perspective on it, taking uh, you know, 15, 20 seconds. I won't transition us, so be ready with uh, your response when we're uh, on your institution. So the first question is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? Again, starting out the, at the top with Syracuse. I think just try to keep organized and open-minded because um, there's a lot of colleges out there that are, offer so many different types of things and sometimes even more customized to what you want to do. So really keep your options open.
Uh, yeah, my two quick um, two quick things. One, um, we've got schools presenting here today, literally from from New York uh, all the way out to uh, basically in your backyard, which is awesome. Wonderful opportunities. Um, don't be afraid to be do something different. Um, I think it's really exciting that you've got colleges here of all different sizes and things like that. Um, and again, all over the place. So don't be afraid to uh, apply somewhere different than your friends, apply somewhere different that maybe you've never heard of, or at least reach out to your friendly admission teams um, at these colleges you've never heard of before and learn about us. Um, also apply when you're ready. Don't feel rushed. Um, don't feel pressured to apply today or tomorrow. Talk to your teams, make sure you're meeting those deadlines, um, but uh, apply when you're ready. Um, I would echo definitely everything um, that my colleagues have said, um, but also enjoy the process. I feel like often we sometimes stress, you know, trying to get the application and the essays or personal insight questions um, that we forget to enjoy the process. Um, so I would definitely um, advise you all to enjoy it. And you have access to thousands of universities through this virtual, you know, um, platform. The pandemic has definitely opened the door to many other um, universities. So definitely apply broadly as well. I'll say to my visual artists uh, that are thinking about being animators or game artists or entertainment designers or fine artists, um, read the website. <laughs> There's lots of important information there. Uh, and speak up, reach out. You know, we tend to be a little bit shy, a little bit introverted. I totally understand that, but there's so much help that we can offer you if you just speak up, reach out to us, um, we'll take it from there. Let's see, I believe it's me now. Um, yeah, I would probably just, similar to what, um, what Ray just mentioned. I think it's always something I always tell students, take ownership of the college application process. I think for me, I always mention, we want you to feel confident because we know that college applications can sometimes be daunting or uh, could be a little bit uh, tough to, to go through. So we always want you to make sure that you can reach out to your representative and we want to you know, provide the information to you to make sure that um, you are able to go into this into this process knowing everything at your disposal and not trying to fill in the, the blanks on your end so uh, yeah just once again you have multiple representatives to reach out to so we encourage you to do that and uh lastly i would just recommend do your research get information from a few different schools talk to representatives from each school um, get it in writing don't go by what's off a website and really find the best fit for you, uh, a school that you can actually see yourself graduating from on campus too. Excellent, thank you. We have time for one more question. The question is, what is one myth you'd like to debunk on the college admissions process? Again, starting at the beginning, Syracuse, please. Okay, we'll move on to St. Mary's College. Um, this is one that I, I we're in right now because I'm, I'm currently reading applications. Um, students say, you don't really read everything, do you? Yes, we really read everything. So uh, don't type your essay on your phone. Um, yes, everything you're sending to us, you worked hard to put it there. Uh, we work hard to read it all. So that is everything that you're sending to us. Yes, we read. Um, I've had students say, you don't really read everything. Yes, we do. So pay attention to all of it and uh, we'll take care of all of it. Thank you. Let's back up real quick. We'll hit uh, Janet. I still see you out there. Um, did you want to weigh in on this one? I see you on mute there. I think what Alex says is right on. Um, that's we do read everything. And um, really, it's not a time to be humble. Um, tell us all about yourself. And, um, you know, let us get to know you because we really do get to know you through your application. Thank you. Jumping around here. So we'll resume our order. We've got uh, University of California. Um, yes, yeah, similarly um, to, you know, that we do read everything. Um, often something that students say is you have to have a certain GPA to be admitted. If not, you're not going to be considered. That is not true. We consider everything about you. We take a comprehensive review. So it's not just your GPA that we're looking at, but everything outside of the classroom as well. There's so many when it comes to art school. Uh, yes, you are good enough. 
Uh, I've literally helped a student put together a graphic design portfolio their senior year for the first time ever, and they've gotten accepted by the end of that year. Um, yes, you can afford it. I'm a first generation college student. If you're looking at the right schools and taking the right steps into the scholarships, you can afford it. And yes, you will get a job. We have an 85% employment rate at LCAD. We're very proud of that. And that is because we focus on your technical ability. Uh, I would probably say in term for just a little bit of the humanization of the college admission process. You know, I think sometimes people think it's just older, you know, men uh, smoking cigars in a room kind of deciding the fate of students when the reality is it's a lot of us are coming from different backgrounds, different ideas, perspectives to be able to kind of say, hey, you know, is this a student that we feel can impact and play a, a contributing role to the university? And so I think that's something that you can always keep in mind that it could be individuals that came from, you know, similar areas, similar backgrounds, just as you, uh, that wants to be able to make sure that uh, you have a part in term for um, being another individual that can play a part in kind of the university story. I think I'd like to just tap into a little bit what Ray was saying. Um, you know, a lot of students say, oh, they can't afford it. You know, there's many, many tools to help you continue your education. There's so many scholarships out there you can apply for. There's grants. You know, there, there's just so many things. So I wouldn't let that deter you. Uh, there's so many options for you to continue on. So I encourage everyone uh, to, to do that. Thank you. And we want to thank all of our presenters today, as well as our attendees for joining. I'd ask our attendees to go ahead and fill out the quick five question survey on the StriveScan website. Again, another reminder, we have other institutions and more sessions. So if you have interest, go ahead and sign up. And then finally, a reminder, the recording is going to be posted to strivescan.com slash calsoap. With that, hope everyone has a great day and we'll see you later.